they did not win a game uh, but I see them finishing in 12th in terms of huge losses they've lost Harry Penny Ichu uh, who got 12 and 37 they've also lost Josh Weiss a scoring threat for the midfield but they have managed to gain Ibi Akambi from Maidstone as well as the previously mentioned Kevin Locko and Giles Phillips I'd give them a 5 out of 10 in terms of their transfer business in 17th, Aldersall, Ultranum. Uh, again, pre-season results were good for these guys, but they didn't take on the best of opponents, and obviously you can't take much from pre-season. In terms of key players, they have Ryan Cockclough, Josh Hancock, and Marcus Dinanga. In the last three, they didn't lose a game, so they'll be very confident going into this season. However, I see them in 17th. In terms of major signings, they obviously got Ben Pringle, who's looking back to get back to his best, like he was at Wolfram. They've also got Brad Jackson, who's a pacey attacking threat, as well as AJ Litt Smith, who should be good down at this level, although they have lost Alistair Smith to Sutton, I believe. I'll give them a 7 out of 10 for that transfer business. Barnet, 14. Again can't find many of their pre-season games but they seem to have done all right the key players this season will probably be adam marriott mitch bundle and jamie turley all new signings and in the last three they did quite well not losing a single game against some good opponents compared to what you'd expect in terms of new signings obviously they've got mitch bundle an experienced national leaguer who can have a very good impact on them they also got daniel powell who was good in league two a couple of years back for crew as well as Jamie Turley, the experienced centre-back, who has been promoted before from this level, and he can very much help stabilise the extremely leaky defence of last season. Again, a 7 out of 10. Bourne Wood in 13th. Again, pre-season was mixed, but again, it doesn't really matter that much in terms of what I saw. Uh, key players will be looking to be Frankie Raymond, Jacob Mendy, who had a very good campaign for Wealdstone, I believe, last season, as well as the goalkeeper, Nathan Asmore. Uh, some other signings they made was Scott Bowden, who is now tasked with replacing Samanga, and Josh Weiss in centre midfield. They obviously lost Kamango Samanga, who, uh, who got 18 out of their 52 goals last season in the league, awaiting off 5 out of 10 for their transfers. Bromley in 10th. Pre-season was very good for them. Uh, their key players looked very decent compared to some of the other teams around that level with Michael Cheek, Lewis Dennis and Byron Webster. A very good centre-back at this level, especially now. In the last three, they did win a couple of games before that tough loss to Hartlepool in the first stage of the playoffs. In terms of other signs, they've obviously got Omar Sawumni, who could Im help improve the defence enough to have more of a go in the playoffs, as well as Lewis Dennis coming back to the club, where he was at his best, and Harry Forster, who was highly weighted at Watford at one point. They have, however, lost Joe Kizzy, who scored a load for a player who played right back last season. A 6 out of 10 for their transfer business. Chesterfield, in 4th, had a very good pre-season, narrowly lost to Port Vale, They've also got Kamango Tismanga, Danny Woe and Akwasi Asante, who was very good last season. And they had a very good end to the season, narrowly losing to Knox County especially. In terms of other signings, they got Calvin Miller and Jeff Kinn from Halifax. They did, however, lose Tom Whelan, who did play well against Yeovil. However, their trans business gets a 9 out of 10. Dagenham, I have predicted to finish one place higher than they previously did in 11th. Uh, their key players will again be Angelo Belanta, Paul McCallum, Matt Robinson, and maybe some breakthrough players could be Josh Walker, George Saunders, or Mo Saga. However, they haven't really signed many players, which is why I don't predict them to finish much higher than they did last season. Uh, although they have made the signing of Sam Lynn, who has won the league before with Leighton Orient. In terms of transfer business, I'm giving it a 3 out of 10. Dover, predictably, are predicted to finish 24th by basically everyone. They have had a very good pre-season in terms of getting some wins, which they'll be needing. 
to get some confidence no matter who the opponent. But they have got some decent players in Wiki Miller and Ben Williamson who should score a few goals, as well as Kale de Costa coming up from Tombridge, I believe. In the last three, they did lose two out of three, but again, that was round about February, so that shouldn't affect them too much. Uh, I gave them a six out of ten in terms of transfer business. Eastley, who should be one of the breakout teams from the mid-table pack this season. Again, only three points off the playoffs. Very much going for it. Their pre-season's been shaky, but at the same time, they've got some good results in there. Key players will be Ben House, Tyrone Barnett and Tom Whelan, who they obviously got from Chesterfield. In the last three, they also only lost to Solihull Moors, who will be right there with them in terms of, of the top half. In terms of signings, they signed Jake Heskev, who has been on loan at the likes of Lincoln and another League 2 team, as well as Harry Pritchard, who was previously of Barnet. They did, however, lose Joe Tomlinson, who had a very good season last time out in terms of scoring, especially for a left-back. Uh, I'll give them an 8 out of 10 for their transfer business. Grimsby, one of the, fir the first of the relegated teams, I have predicted to finish in 6th. Had a solid pre-season, a few disappointing results in terms of that loss to Hyde. Uh, but in terms of key players, they've got Ryan Taylor, John McCatty and Sebastian Webban, who they are very highly rated in. In their last three, they did lose to Exeter and Cambridge, but they did get a good win against Port Vale. In terms of signings, they have got Joel Grant, a player who has been winding down for a while and probably is looking for that one more promotion in his career. As well as Sean Pearson, a very good signing from Wexham. However, they have lost Matty Pollock, who will be a big loss. 6 out of 10 for their transfer business. Halifax, I have predicted to have a massive drop-off and finish in 16th, due to the amount of losses in terms of players they've had. It's been an average pre-season, but they have got some key players, doing Tom Bradbury, Luke Summerfield, and that new signer of Matt Warburton, who just... Never really got the chance at Yeovil. Their last three was actually pretty bad for the most part, other than that win against Maidenhead. But the Pews losses this season will be Jay Kide, Jeffkin and Jack Ewan, with the big signs being Matt Warburton and Jordan Slew. So, yeah, five out of ten for their trans business. Kings Lynn, 22nd. An OK pre-season. Their key players will be Junior, Moraes, Luis Fernandez, and Cairo Mitchell. With the last three results not going their way in the National League. One of their most recent signings was Gordon Mateo, who showed sparks at Yeovil, but injuries really affected his chance to gain any momentum, plus the form of Murphy and Duffus. Four out of 